Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is January 31st, 2020, and I got about six different segments for this episode. Um, I hope you enjoy it. The first, <clears throat> excuse me, first segment is entitled Derek Brooks versus Ray Lewis versus Javon Curse. And here's what I wrote about that. Um, first up, Derek Brooks. Derek Brooks to me was the original um, of the hybrid linebacker at Florida State. He was six foot, 225 pounds. He ran like a gazelle and hit like a Mack truck and had tremendous athleticism with great instincts. Arguably one of the best defensive players in college football history and definitely number one all time uh, at Florida State. Arguably, excuse me, arguably, you can definitely make the case for Deion Sanders also. All right. Um, Next up. Ray Lewis Ray Lewis one of the most intimidating middle linebackers and or defensive players I ever seen play ferocious tremendous hitter tremendous tackler quick and deceptive deceptively fast rarely was he out of position he played coverage well also he and Derek Brooks are battling for my best linebacker spot all time and this is true linebackers like you've had outside linebackers that were great like a Lawrence Taylor or or Derek um um I forget the dude name from Kansas City number 58 dang but he you know I consider them defensive ends a, a, a true linebacker to me plays coverage Um, so that's my that's uh the case for Ray Lewis. Next, Javon Curse, the freak. He could play coverage. He could put his hand in the dirt and be a defensive end. Long arms and lanky, but visibly a very big guy. He took the NFL by storm his rookie year with fourteen sacks. Um this is a guy that Isaiah Simmons from Clemson should model his game after. Rare combo of strength, speed, athleticism. Career was cut short due to injuries. So the winner, I have to slightly give the edge to Ray Lewis over Derrick Brooks. Ray Lewis is one of the greatest defensive players to ever play this game. And definitely the... Uh, best middle linebacker um you know i'm not a miami fan but you know when they have great players that come through you know i just give them their respect man sean taylor ed reed ray lewis jerome brown warren sapp cortez kennedy uh dj williams um I forget the other linebacker. Um, I'm trying to think his name. Um, Jonathan Vilma. You know, players like that. And the other outside linebacker I was trying to think of, it just escaped my mind, was Derek Thomas. Him and uh, Lawrence Taylor are the greatest outside linebackers of all time. But basically, outside linebacker is a pass rusher. They usually don't drop in the coverage. Most of the time, they don't. Um, but, yeah. You know, Javon Curse. It's not a lot from uh, Florida. Um, Javon Curse, Emmett Smith, I Kill You, Riddell Anthony. I didn't like any of Florida's quarterbacks. 
quarterbacks. Um, I liked um, Hargraves. Um, yeah, so, I mean, let me know what you think about that segment. Um, I just went on a different tangent there. Ray Lewis was the um, is the winner of that comparison. Um, like I said, he's one of the, the greatest defensive players to ever play the game. Um, and I'm going to move on to the next segment, which is, um, you know, Kobe Bryant died in a hel- uh, helicopter crash uh, this week. I didn't want to put out something and try to get you know views or whatever based off the man dying or whatever i just wanted to take a a week to um pay my respect i really wasn't a fan but like i said you always appreciate talent when i see it and he's one of the greatest to ever do it um i was more sad for the his uh 13 year old daughter it's just I think one of the most um, horrifying things life can deal out is like when a kid is about to die in the terror that they must feel when they know their life is about to end. I mean, as a kid, I don't think a kid should ever have to experience that. And, um, you know, I just hope his wife and his, um, I think he's got two other three other daughters two or three other daughters i mean i just hope that they can somehow get through this and come out on the other side and just you know um you know maintain but um this is what i wrote about the kobe bryant situation uh, Kobe, Bryant, Kobe Bryant died on Sunday in a helicopter crash. His daughter died also. Um, to me, it's just the same. Um, Kobe Bryant had a impact on a generation of kids. Um, one of the greatest athletes ever in sports. Um like I said before, I'm more upset about his daughter dying. Kids should never have to realize their mortality at a young age. Um, I hope his family is doing okay. Uh, Mamba mentality forever. And, um, you know, that's all I'm going to say. Just move on to the next segment, um, which is entitled... The myth about a certain thirst quencher, energy drinks, like energy drinks before energy drinks. Um, <clears throat> coming up, my generation really thought that electrolyte drinks could make you a better player. And a certain drink, um, a certain drink company marketed that to young people. Looking back on it, I was really naive I was like nine or ten years old, and you still you still think the world is a good place and people always do the right thing. No. Um, I would drink my thirst quencher, drink and go play hoops, and lose, and be like, but I drink Gatorade. <laughs> uh. Michael Jordan was the guy they used to market this drink to young kids who were very impressionable. It was a excellent marketing ploy. Once I figured it out, which was about the age of 11, I felt robbed. Like, why do companies take advantage of kids like that? They sell you a dream and they, you know, very few achieve it. Um, but at least I stay hydrated (laughs) and it prevented cramps Um, I played sports I never had to leave a game for that reason 
dehydration or cramps. So I guess they serve. I guess the uh, sports drinks served their, their purpose. Um, yeah, man. It was just crazy how um, <laughs> how they used to take advantage of uh, kids back in the day. Be like Mike, like Mike. Everybody know that commercial. So um, let me know what you think about that segment, man. Um, next segment is entitled, um, which would you rather have, a talented team or a team that is uh, fundamentally sound? Okay, a talented team versus a fundamentally sound team. The fundamentally sound team does everything right. The talented team usually just tries to get by on talent. All right, here's what I wrote about that. Talented team or fundamentally sound team, which would you rather have? Talent or fundamentals? Most players want both, but talent fades over time. Fundamentals last forever. Talent will get you very far in whatever sport. But eventually, a player who's great at both will come along and humble you if you're just talented. Um, I've seen this happen. I've experienced it. It's very hard to get a group of people on the same page. But when it happens, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Like a team playing basketball the way the Golden State Warriors played during their run. Um, I loved it. Um, I'm not a Warriors fan. I just appreciate uh, fundamental basketball, fundamental anything in sports. Um, you know, you you have a great, you have a talented team like the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I'm not going to say they don't play with fundamentals, but they use more talent than you say a Patrick Mahomes, a Tyreek Hill, you know. I think Patrick Mahomes is closer to Brett Favre than he is to Peyton Manning, just in my opinion. Um, then you look at a team like the New England Patriots, who are the the, the uh, definition of fundamentals. They win six Super Bowls. Um, so I have to say the winner of this uh, comparison has is, is got to be fundamentals, man. I mean, of course you want talent. But if you're not fundamentally sound in everything that you do in your sport of choice, you're going to get humbled eventually. And um, let me know what you think about that segment. All right. And um, my next segment is going to be. Can Florida State exceed expectations? And. This is what I wrote about that. Can Florida State exceed expectations? What are the expectations? Eight and four, nine and three, fielding a competent team, um, getting better play from every position, especially offensive tackle and quarterback. This is not a quick fix. You need more offensive linemen, which they, they did sign an offensive tackle this week. They said he's projected to be the starting left tackle. I don't know if he can step in year one and contribute. Um, you never know. Um, you need more offensive line via grad transfer, JUCO, or high school. Wherever you wherever you get them from, we need them. All right, the defense will be okay, I think. Thus, for Novell, thus far, excuse me, thus far, uh, Norvell is doing a B plus job that can go that can become a A plus if he gets a couple of more tackles um, this that puts that position in particular has plagued this program for the last four years um, they are addressing it and um, I didn't like the fact that they turned away they turned away Alex at Kavich. I thought we could have used him. Um, I didn't think at that particular time it was a good look for the program. Um, I think guard is one of the most versatile positions on the offensive line. I think if you can play guard, you can play tackle. Um, guards are usually more athletic anyway. Um, 
the defense under Andy Fuller, I think, will be pretty good. Um, he's free to do more film study and draw up schemes. Um, so I think the defense will pro- will improve tremendously. Um, this team can exceed expectations. Um, yeah, so I just think. I just think Norvell thus far has done better in terms of the off season stuff, solely focusing on recruiting and not the, you know, selling a pipe dream to the fan base. And, you know, he's acquiring talent left and right. So we, you know, I think he's going to do pretty good, man. Um, Like I said, eight and four, nine and three, if he can exceed that, that would be even better. Um, so that's going to conclude this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this It's available on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please scroll down to the description. Click on one of the links and rate, review, and subscribe. I appreciate every single subscriber that listens to this um podcast on a daily basis can't thank you enough for your support i hope you continue to listen and as always go nose